In this video, we're going to explore the concept of compound colliders. Now, earlier on, over here in Photoshop, I discussed that we really only had three flavors of collider at our disposal. We had primitive, which we've already discussed. We have mesh, which we've also already discussed. And then we have wheel, which we haven't got around to yet. But before we do, I want to talk about the concept of compound colliders. And a compound collider is where you take multiple colliders and combine them together to create a more complicated surface. Generally, you're going to use primitive uh, colliders in order to do this, but you don't necessarily have to. If for some reason you wanted to use a series of different mesh colliders, you could. I mean, if you have a, a special, very simple mesh collider that you have specifically for the purpose, I mean, you could do that. But we're going to focus on just using several different primitive colliders and combine them together to cause appropriate collision with a relatively complex object. Now, I have an object in mind, a little sawhorse that I modeled out in Maya. It's very simple, just basic. You see, it's just a bunch of cubes, and I wiggled some vertices around. But how would this object need to collide? I mean, you've got these little, you know, the legs that stick off on the side. Of course, we you know, stick out on either end. we got the great big beam that runs down the middle. It's not a simple object. We couldn't just put all of this in a box because then if a character or something needed to run under it, then we'd have a problem. It would smack right, you know, dab into it. Now, this is fairly simple geometry, but it's also multiple pieces. So I don't want to have to go model out a, uh, you know, a new surface just to, to work with this. And even, you know, even if I did, maybe this is a really high detailed sawhorse. Maybe it's got all kinds of faces all over it. I mean, you know, just thinking theoretically, it could be a lot more complicated than what you see here. And so it's possible that just switching over to a mesh collider wouldn't be prudent. So what I'm going to do instead is create a compound collider out of several different primitive colliders. So let's start off by making this a rigid body before I forget to do that, because again, you guys haven't seen the number of times I've done that tonight. So once we add that, of course, we lose our prefab, which is perfectly all right. Now we have no colliders right now. What I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to add a collider to this object right off the bat. What I'm going to do is create an empty game object that I'm going to simply call Collider1. Now if you wanted to get, I guess, more expressive with your naming, you could call this maybe Collider Beam. And this would be for the primary beam down the middle. Now it's just an empty game object. That's all this is. What I'm going to do with this game object, though, is go under physics and drop on a box collider. And now I have a box collider that I can move anywhere I want in the scene. I'm going to take this game object and I'm going to parent it to my sawhorse. So now if I expand sawhorse, you'll see underneath it, I have my collider beam. This means that if I take the sawhorse and move it around, that collider comes along with it. Now let's take that collider and let's reshape it. We can just do this. We could go in and actually change its center and its size, but we can also just scale it because boxes are cool like that. Now I'm going to get this close, but I'm not really going to beat myself up if it's not 150% precise, like if you could even be 150% precise. For the sake of our discussion, I'm going to say that you could. So there we go. And maybe scoot it over to the side just a little bit more, maybe scale it out. I don't want to get too nitpicky on a video, but that's pretty close right there. Now, we could create another game object if we wanted to, or since all we're doing is just kind of scaling this object, we could just hit Control D and duplicate this, and let's just rename it Collider Leg 1. You with me so far, Lee? Yep. You see what we're going to be doing? Yes, I do. All right, well, let's see. I'm going to hold down V, and let's just drag this guy right here to this point. And you're about to do one thing that makes this technique very uh, different from adding multiple colliders to the same game object. Well, we already can do that because we have two different box Boxes, colliders. Right, and you also can't rotate. That's right, and this is where it gets cool because we have these nice kind of 45-ish degree angles. And we want to be able to center up as best we can, so now let's scale this down we'll make it shorter now it doesn't have to be perfect collision folks please keep that in mind right. this is a game and while you're running around in a first person shooter how often do you look and see how perfectly you ran into that barrel right if we catch just this bottom corner we're probably good enough 
and we could consider it to be based on and we're and we're fine so let's go ahead and scale down a little bit and then I'll slide it down just a little bit more it's okay if they pass through one another that's not gonna cause me problems at all and then maybe we could just scale it down just to be a little more snug and then we'll widen it out just a little bit and there we go so that works I mean you could probably sit there and tweak on it for a good long while now I'm gonna duplicate that and we'll change this to leg two and we'll drag this right across the way and now those two together I'll grab and duplicate and we'll call this one leg three and this one leg four now let's grab three and four and I'll slide them over actually let's switch over to world coordinates we'll slide them over this way real quick now let's see I, I'm rotating from the center so th they still have a little bit of rotation so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it we'll get close and then slide them back into position that's not half bad All right. now if we select our sawhorse check it out we have all of these different collision objects already lined up so now let's take the sawhorse itself and we'll rotate it around a little bit and also notice he didn't put a collider on every bit of geometry on the sawhorse nah these little guys here don't really need colliders I mean if you wanted to put one on there you could if you just really wanted to be picky about it but think about the situation in which you'd need to collide with that I mean if you had a really precise kind of game maybe but probably not uh, the main beam is important because it sticks out on either side and obviously the legs are going to be critical so those got colliders and anything that was just kind of secondary and is really there as a decoration eh, just forget it now one thing I did not do that you could and you probably should do and I'll do it just for the sake of completion is to make sure that you get a physic material in here and I just want to point out that it would have been a lot easier to assign it on the first one because they would have come along with the duplicates but fortunately dragging and dropping is also pretty quick and we'll drop that in I think we're finally ready to test so let's hit play and bump bump and it lands on all four of its legs nice job now we can do crazy things with the rotation if we want we could maybe give it a much crazier sort of spin just to test all the different angles and there it goes and it's behaving exactly the way you would think a sawhorse should in the real world in terms of how accurate we need it to be it's also very simple because all we're using is a series of box colliders this is a very very useful technique if you have a complicated object that you need to create some collision objects for so that, unless you have any questions, Lee. Well, I was just saying is also once you're done with this uh -huh. and you've got multiple saw horses, don't forget, turn this into a prefab so you don't have to do this with every That's single one. That's true. So we could come back over here. I think I've got a prefabs folder, and if I don't, I should. Let's see. My materials. My prefabs. So let's select this, and this is just kind of a bonus. We'll go ahead and create a new prefab right here, and we'll call this my saw horse. So now you can put like three or four of them in the scene and drop them absolutely we'll drop that in and then and now they're gonna come in with a really cool rotation so it'd probably be a good idea to zero that out and then boom there's another one and then I'm gonna leave one on the ground for them to kinda of fall on yep alright let me get this one and rotate it to something interesting though okay here we go and clatter you can almost hear them smacking into each other. So that's everything I wanted to show, really. It was just showing how to create these compound colliders using multiple primitives as opposed to having to fall back on a, a mesh every time you think you need one. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.